Gas Part of one of the founders of Biochar now. And uh, we're a producer of Biochar. We produce what we consider a high quality biochar. All we do is produce char. We don't chase power, we don't chase fuel, we don't chase heat. All we do is make biochar. Uh, therefore, I'm just focused on the biochar markets. And what we do is we're building, we build at large scale. I, mean, I have to, I have to get my partner who's very good at making char and cost effectively, and I have to get rid of hundreds of truckloads of char in the next months. So we're at a little different scale. So what we do is we chase industrial customers. And uh, I ran into Ron at a function in Denver and we started telling him some DSOs and I want to start telling him some of the war stories because uh, it reminds me of the cartoon Pogo. You know, what's keeping this industry from accelerating growth? You know, I've met the enemy and it is us. Uh, what I find, uh, I mean, as manufacturers, broad based manufacturers, uh, all biochars are not created equal. I can't hammer this on the floor. I mean, it's been every everything I've sat in to try to make this point. It seems like some of the manufacturers don't get that. Uh, especially even with this IDI certification. I, I applaud the industry for trying to do that. But if you allow someone with over 50% ash to be IDI certified, you're going to have a guy in there saying, oh, it's IDI certified, so I can do it DC and D without knowing so my message to the industry is, as a manufacturer, you have great resources in this room of people who can do testing. Test your char in every application you want to go in. I'm, I'm a lawyer, I'm a reform lawyer, but the, uh, the first thing I taught you in law school is don't ask a question you don't know the answer to first. Why would a manufacturer go into a large client Say I can do an X, Y, and Z, and then not know if they can or not. Uh, I, and that's where the war stories came in. I was telling Ron. I mean, I've ran, I've been sitting in the boardroom of billion-dollar companies, and they've been wanting to do biochar. And they sit there and tell me, well, the guy before you promised A, B, and C, and they killed every plant we put it in contact with, and they did this and did that. And then, you know, so you end up wasting their valuable time explaining to them. Charts. Uh, there are industries out there, I mean, just so you know, there's billions of dollars in markets out there for biochar. And we you know that we've already tested it and we know they're there. Uh, so there's plenty of markets, I'm not worried. But we're all, all manufacturers going to be under the water. Nobody can produce enough jar, at least on the industrial side. You're welcome to have the raw base act. Uh, I sell the value. There's applications that we're selling into where the value of the jar five, six times is the largest number I've heard here. You know, so I don't also don't understand why some of these guys are chasing low, low price, but that's their business they want to go from they side. Um, so that's, I guess, in, in the essence. I mean, just please, if I can caution the industry, before you open your mouth in front of a customer, know that your char will do what you said it does. Because you're doing nothing but harming the industry as a whole. I mean, I'm going to get my share of business. I'm not worried about that. And all you will get your share of the business. But that one customer literally went offline for two years when he was looking for millions of dollars worth of char because of that one customer. And I just last week, I ran into the same thing in a Canadian customer. You know, we were we increased the CERT metric 30%. So they wanted to use a local manufacturer. They went to a local manufacturer. He brought the char in and completely failed, destroyed the process. So it happens in both ways. I know everybody wants to sell their char. Just know what it does. Because there's plenty of testing facilities that are dedicated to biochar. They know what they're doing. And that's my request from the industry, for the industry, from a manufacturer. Thank you. James, stay there for a minute. James and I are from Colorado. We have a huge problem in Colorado with beetle kill. And I happen to know that Beetle kill is primary, I think primary. Could, could you describe a little bit about uh, how, how the resource gets to you? What, what, what is, what is, just a little bit about how serious this is, where biochar can make a big difference. Yeah, what we do, we're operating in Colorado. So uh, this whole company, the 
Jensen's the company is, I have a lot of uh, land in the mountains. And uh, then I'll tie my feet with all the trees. Uh, local forest, there was one to charge me more to cut down my trees, and I paid for the land. So uh, I decided I'd come up with a solution, and biochar was it, and I partnered up with my partner, and the rest is history, as they say. Uh, so what we do is we are a destination point. We buy log trucks of logs. We're also working on uh, slash and things like that. So what we are is we, we're set up. The logging industry delivers us product just through a paper mill. The difference being they, they can take the nice logs and sawmill. I take all the garbage logs. But I still pay them like I'm a sawmill. I mean, we literally still pay the same amount for a tree as if it was a prime tree. So the state loves us sense that we're given a market for garbage that you know would sit in the forest otherwise uh, and reduce the fire danger in our state they actually have banned burning slash pots so right now we're about it you know, you know, as far as I'm not sure I'm paid for the so that's the genesis and we've been visited by seven or eight other states the forestry departments of other states one that's located in those states and we will move to those states because the market's going to demand it for, for the amount of char available. So it's, it's a great win-win. We've lowered the amount of money their tax dollars you have to give them to uh, clean up. It's really, uh, stewardship contracts, I believe is what it is. Uh, um, James, the, the issue of scaling is, is, I think, a critical issue. And in particular, uh, we're still relatively early industry, there are niche markets, there are high values of uh, chars, but they're relatively small niche markets, they're localized. And the question is, uh, from your perspective, uh, how, what is the pathway towards scaling up to a level at which char can be used at an agricultural level and can actually be large enough? see to this room the broad ag market, you're welcome to it. And where you can use our char is like, uh, you know, once we use it in an industrial setting, uh, you know, as an example, we remove nitrates and phosphates from water. Uh, that's pre-charged biochar. They've already paid me to remove the nitrates and phosphates, and you're welcome to spread it on the farm after that. You know, but I can't, and I just, you know, I'm not going to produce, I'm not going to sell at the price that the farmers want. Now, the specialty ag market, you know, we have a certain industry in Colorado that, uh, you know, we're showing incredible results. I mean, they're making over $2,000 of extra yield per plant using our product. And so, you know, they can take a nickel's worth of char and make an extra $2,000. It's pretty good, you know. Uh, but those are the kind of ag markets I choose. I'll, I'll bet there's some people in the room who don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> say, say it a little uh, bit more. The mar marijuana is legal in Colorado. Uh, and we, they are extremely highly scientific, and we're lucky to supply that market. And we supply the market in California. We, see, it takes years of data. That's another thing all the manufacturers need to understand. Some of my customers have been testing my char for three years. Now, there's a big pot of gold in the rainbow, but you need, it's not a one hit wonder. You can't go take a boiler ash, sift out the black stuff, not know what you're doing, and then go blow up a, go blow up a customer. That's all, you know, that's all I know. James, uh, I think this conference, and I, I'm part of the planning committee, greatly appreciates all of the support that we get from industry. And some, some people in this room are coming because you were able to support them. I know that your partner is a big part of that. Would you introduce your partner? Bill uh, Firewalters. He's my partner. W would you stand up? Bill was actually the founder of. Uh, we're both serial entrepreneurs. Bill is actually the founder of Colorado Memory Systems, which is a name you guys may know from the 90s, is that it? Yeah, uh, he controlled over 60% of the world tape, tape backup market at one time. Of course, not on today's But uh, he's a seasoned entrepreneur. 
I've done other companies like electric vehicles and stuff, but I will tell you, Bill has brought this technology to an extremely cost-effective deal where we're, we're scaling, and it's, uh, he's the brains behind the scale. Eric, I think we're run, we have run out of time, so I'm going to ask Ethan to say a final word. I, I have one more question that kind of follows up on John Bonin's question. Uh, I know that you went through some effort to, to have a very clean release, EPA going yes. through EPA. Would you describe some of that process and how important it was? Uh, we basically operate under what's called synthetic binder. Uh, so we have to be extremely clean. We're allowed to go, through, so you have to, you know, no visible smoke, no CO, well, very little CO, we have very little thick matter, all that. Uh, there is no federal regs, so we had to get Colorado to approve us, which they're coming by now after the fact, the hardest in the nation. But uh, that was a challenge because uh, that was a challenge in our process. And it was a challenge to get paperwork across people's desks. Uh, but, you know, it's done. And because of the support, I mean, I will say the EPA said they supported us for the last three years, the Colorado CDHPD, their version of the EPA. Because of the issue of political sensitivity of cleaning up the forest, they have been very supportive of us. Uh, but we had to meet the regs, there was no free ride. James, we're almost on time. Stay right there. Uh, each of them are going to make a final statement. Any, any final thing you want to say? Please test your jar. Yeah. Know the answer before you ask the question, or the customer asks the question. Because there's so many niche markets. I've identified over 20 markets where nine figures of jar can go in those markets. You know, it's not a one-trick pony, guys. We have an incredible product here. Every one of your chars is good for something. If you can't figure it out, sell it to me, I'll get rid of it. Uh, at a good price, you know, you're gonna sell it to me cheap. Uh, but, you know, just, just know what you're smoking. Know what your market is, know what your market is. 